visible in Berlin. We are uh, starting this project, which is the uh, Alice project. And uh, this project, with this name, uh, I think resonates with your work in a sense, because I know that you are, you are teaching and you are writing, Alice in the Wonderland has been a presence. What do you think should we be doing with a project titled Alice? in reference to Lewis Carroll. What would it mean to be Alice in Wonderland as a title of project? What? Well, I think uh, it says exactly what uh, you may wish to consider. Uh, there is uh, the possibility of uh, following the history of Alice and the uh, extension of that uh, history in terms of receptions cultural reception. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a second axis might be uh, to focus on the thematics which in Alice might exist and that mm -hmm. they are there mm -hmm. and uh, that would allow you uh, to focus, to, to choose an uh, element on uh, which to focus and uh, organize the education. And the argument of the, the seminar you are referring to uh, is uh, uh, a very systematic, uh, but in actuality it goes from theories uh, into uh, mm -hmm. the practical situations mm -hmm. and uh, to death, uh, finally. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is the last line, uh, which is that of uh, Alice's propositions. And uh, we tend to smile because they seem to come from that child yeah, who is not right. a child. Uh, yeah. he is a very good teacher of, of uh, our discipline. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's what intrigued me from, uh, from the very beginning, is that Alice can raise two ideas, which I think are quite important for us in this project. One is uh, the idea of surprise, I mean, surprise vision, surprise angle, uh, the change of scales, and also the question of mirror. You take, you consider, for example, uh, uh, the idea of Amor Dei, it means uh, the love that God uh, has for me, but uh, it means also, it might mean also, the love that I have for God. Mm -hmm. Thus, from these models, with uh, uh, the entry uh, concerning uh, 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 that uh, uh, particular moment, uh, we can look at uh, uh, Alice's reactions, uh, subjective, Mm -hmm. and objective That's right. uh, through uh, the dative or uh, uh, the okay. genitive. And uh, the lesson can uh, lead to uh, a number of considerations, uh, uh, the West and uh, yeah, the West passion, uh, uh, the West uh, 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 programs, uh, the West uh, uh, historical experience, uh, the uh, West uh, 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 colonization of the world. We are, there we are creating uh, uh, genitives, and mm -hmm. the genitives, uh, yes, might be objective or subjective. But, but this idea that, that these two entries may be, uh, in a sense, uh, subject and, uh, subjective and objective at the same time, uh, you know, in a sense, scandalous, as you were saying, scandalous propositions, so yes. to say. Yeah. And in, in my view, the, the, the very project that we are trying to, uh, to, to do at this stage is really very scandalous, in, in stand, in, 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 uh, to the extent that it starts from two premises uh, that I'd like to see your reaction about, because they are purposefully scandalous. That is to say, Europe has not much to teach to the world today. Uh, it has taught a lot in the past but probably is exhausted. And uh, the tragic thing is that uh, it cannot learn, or it's very difficult for Europe to learn from the experience of the world because colonialism has incapacitated it from, from learning in a kind of an horizontal way from the experiences of others. This is quite scandalous uh, for some people, of course, not for me, otherwise I would be, and for the, my team, uh, but maybe some, scandalous for some people that say, well, you know, uh, Europe has taught and will continue to teach and to teach and it's such a, uh, a complex tradition that uh, how can you say there is very little that this tradition can teach to the world in a kind of a future-oriented manner, in a kind of a misiptory what, what, what do you think of these two propositions? Uh, it is possible to continue the process 
pour euh, un trise, un trou de génitif pour euh, des types by finding, uh, by finding uh, uh, a paradigm. Uh, why do we do that? We do that uh, because we are considering uh, human lives. Or we do that because we are uh, the ones who have been alienated and uh, who are mm -hmm. reflecting exactly the way you have been uh, reflecting uh, and uh, trying to name uh, the issues. Uh, now, you are reflecting on something. Mm -hmm. That's the object. And uh, then there is something else. It is the you reflecting. And now, uh, let's focus on uh, the you reflecting uh, because you are reflecting as the subject uh, of uh, a, a project or uh, about the project, but uh, you are also reflecting as you are considering yourself as, let's say, uh, an object uh, uh, mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. Now, the reflection process is something uh, uh, which uh, is uh, linked to the way you are positing the reflection uh, uh, is a way of uh, 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 it's a key to your own, mm -hmm. uh, I would say, uh, identity, uh, to the question who you are, uh, and uh, in this context, and uh, the, the problems you are, you are facing, uh, the first uh, uh, response uh, uh, would be, I come from, and I went uh, through this and that experience, uh, which can account for my way of uh, looking at uh, I'm saying, but, but no, 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 I stop you there because uh, uh, it's an ecstasy. Mm -hmm. You are standing outside of yourself and inventing mm -hmm. your history in which Europe played a role. But I'm stopping there because I'm saying, yeah, you see what you are doing? You are choosing elements and uh, putting them and uh, organizing them in order to say, this is what happened and uh, this is what I am. Temporalizing yourself mm -hmm. uh, as a way of uh, inventing the past. And uh, there I can say, you see, you are not facing really the complexity of your own history. You are recreating something else. Then you can say, you can say to me, you can say, no, 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 I am, I say, please, Try to tell me exactly what you are doing in your mind. Mm -hmm. And you say, I am reflecting. That's, it. That's wonderful. Because you are the subject reflecting and uh, the object reflected you Paul. Mm -hmm. And uh, there again, like in temporalization, well, about Europe, this time it is you who become, you become uh, the issue and uh, uh, you are simultaneously the reflecting subject and uh, the reflected report right. subject facing Europe and mm. the history. Do you think that you are in the same position when you were writing the invasion of Africa? You, African, uh, you yes, are indeed. object and yes, subject. Yes, uh, simultaneously. So your reflection is a self-reflection. Simultaneously, Our. not only that, uh, because uh, there is a third uh, ecstasy. And uh, the third ecstasy is, is yeah, I am positing myself as uh, the uh, uh, reflecting subject and uh, discovering through the process, the very process of reflection, that uh, I am a being for others and that uh, all my uh, uh, in involvement and uh, my uh, uh, reflection uh, is accounted for the fact that from documentation, mm -hmm. from the context, and from the very issue of the reflection, I am a being for others. If I ask this question, or if I say this statement as a kind of an hypothesis, that is to say, Europe has not much to teach, I'm, I'm saying it's an hypothesis, right? Let's, let's pursue it. Uh, in human rights, in conceptions of democracy, in conceptions of the human being, of nature, and so on, let's pursue that. Is this assumption or this hypothesis to be dealt with differently if it is uh, dealt with by an European as myself or by you as an African? What difference does it make 
to be African and European in this process? Does the question change or is the answer that changes? Or uh, both? No, it is the condition of the question. Uh, we are positing ourselves, uh, uh, well, in a language, the language we are uh, using, yeah. and uh, in uh, uh, now, and uh, the now that we are using, uh, we are reflecting on is within the experience of living, well, in a given context. Mm -hmm. And uh, this context uh, uh, leads us to a geography, and uh, it is a city in which we are living. Uh, theoretically, it is a city. And uh, the city in which we are living uh, is uh, the uh, European Western uh, city. And uh, the model uh, we are facing in order to understand it and uh, justify the interest, the explication that uh, our reflection can produce. But that's, that's a question of experience, because after all, look at, uh, you know, in your case and my case, so I was born in Europe, but then most of my life has been, in fact, conducted and lived in Latin America, in the States, in Africa, and so on. You also, most of your life, or part of your life, has been lived outside Africa. So what makes you an African? Uh, and why is it uh, so different, my perspective, or might be very different, my perspective on Europe from your experience? Is it a question of origin or of a question of experience? According to the, 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 the libraries that we are uh, consulting, it is a question of uh, how we have been represented and named outside our own experience. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take seriously the three ecstasies. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, the three ecstasies, the first one, we temporalize ourselves uh, mm -hmm. within uh, a context, uh, a culture, and a language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second one, uh, we come to understand that we are simultaneously a subject and, uh, and uh, object. And uh, finally, that uh, we are also uh, being for others. But the three ecstasies, you know what we have done? We have exactly reproduced the system of reproduction of uh, an octo octopus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the... It is through sissiparities that an octopus uh, uh, reproduces uh, itself, just one individuality. Yeah. And now, our process, our process of reflecting about Europe, first, it involves uh, 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 ourselves, and uh, we come to apprehend ourselves as subject and object, and uh, the mind, in fact, is uh, proceeding through sissiparities, and mm -hmm. at a given moment, vis-à-vis -vis Europe, I am a, a being, uh, you know, a being for others mm -hmm. who invented me, but uh, who is reflecting on that invention, mm -hmm. and at the same time, apprehending in the very process a subjective way of reading the fact that one is subject and uh, one is uh, uh, object. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we write the history of Europe, and uh, we write the history through the model of uh, one self temporalization. Yes, you are involved, I am involved, and uh, the problem is to check uh, the measure of objectivity in rendering what we are seeing and uh, what uh, we have learned. Well, in my, in my own terms, I think what you were saying, which is, uh, I, I fully agree with that, is that in order to ask these questions, in fact, we are not just a question of self-reflection, of context and so on, but also a question of epistemologies and history. Correct. And, and these histories, in fact, have to be reformulated, cannot be the universal history of, uh, of Hegel. And I think that uh, the reason why I ask about the scandalous nature of these hypothesis that Europe has very little to teach to the world is that suppose that we compare to Hegel's philosophy of history and then when Hegel says that Africa is not even part of history and therefore cannot possibly teach anything to the world while he does then you know that Europe in fact is teaching everywhere everyone at all times 
because in fact history has been moving from east to the west and as you know and, and ends up in the Prussian state so but, uh, you go you go too fast you go too fast <laughs> <laughs> because we begin by defining a space uh, which is uh, highly limited uh, our conversation now that conversation on the one hand and uh, on the other hand, uh, this uh, expansion uh, uh, through which uh, 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 Hegel, for example, comes in, uh, yes, are reflecting uh, a way, your way, our way, of existing uh, within uh, this particular space which is represented by a model. And uh, the European model, the Judeo-Christian model, uh, which is there from which uh, we are uh, raising these issues and uh, from uh, the viewpoint of alienation, a subject uh, thinking about alienation, well, it's a Greek model. Mm -hmm. It's a Greek model uh, that is giving us, uh, in actuality, uh, reasons of, uh, yeah, reasons of uh, revolting reasons of uh, making uh, a statement uh, about uh, about the city in which uh, we are living uh, the language in which we are uh, functioning and now uh, that model uh, uh, yesterday uh, during uh, a discussion with uh, one of uh, your uh, young uh, uh, colleagues mm -hmm. uh, comes to my mind the fact that in order to understand the city in which we are functioning, we can use two reflectors. Back and back in time, in Greeks, mm -hmm. Simonides, polis didaskei andra, we are back to that. It is the polis didaskei that teaches andra. Ah, men. Mm -hmm. He had the option between Aner and the Sandra mm -hmm. and Anthropos. He chose Aner. So there is there an affirmation of uh, inequality. It is already there. Mm -hmm. it, the genesis of the model in which we are functioning. Yeah. And uh, from which we can revolt looking at uh, the history of Europe or uh, we can uh, think uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, what's Re different revolt, out there. Uh, revolt is important, but, there but is to find a, an alternative. Yeah, but uh, yeah. there is an alternative. I am uh, uh, focusing on something uh, uh, that uh, is of interest in uh, your reasoning, uh, which is inequality and uh, revolt. Absolutely. Now, what do we have to oppose to uh, that uh, model of Simonides uh, at the genesis of uh, the Greek uh, experience? The definition of... Uh, a good citizen in a democracy, and uh, we think of Athens, mm -hmm. correct? Right. The most explicit legal definition of uh, the good citizen of Athens. The free man who can think the way you are thinking, and uh, we are thinking against the very experience of the city, is perceived as, well, are what is defined by a metaphor represented by three propositions. That citizen is to be defined from the viewpoint of women, the good woman of Athens. She is. She is the daughter of a citizen. Uh, she is the spouse of a citizen. And uh, she is the mother of a citizen. So we see the definition, Demosthenes, is defining who you are, who we are, from the definition of uh, what is a good uh, woman of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, Athens. And now oppose the police disaster and of Simonides to the definition of uh, a good uh, citizen uh, uh, in the democracy that uh, uh, we uh, conceive when uh, we begin uh, uh, thinking about yeah, that comes to uh, mind. I mean, all the, the feminist classicists like Françoise Melton and yes, so on. Indeed, they, uh, they, they have been claiming the, that point. Uh, yeah, I, I. It's not only the feminist. 
because the citizen are defined there. And the two spaces are defined. You have the oikos, where the good woman is mm -hmm. going to live, and then the politicon, yeah. in which uh, you are going to be functioning. If you are the child of the good woman, and then you have got uh, the slave and uh, the barbaroi, qui those who are outside. But I, I see your, you know, I have no, no question what, and you're going back all the time to the Greek experience, even though I have some problems with what that means. Because as you know, and we were discussing about Martin Bernal, the black Athena, and then the African Athena, it's a very complex configuration of knowledges that occur in Alexandria, in the Middle East, and so on. And then from 19th century onwards, becomes Greek, and only Greek as a rupture from the rest of the world. I, I'm not going to question that. What I'm saying is yeah, that... But, uh, do you see that uh, we are indeed, uh, by using that model, we are thinking about I'm Europe. Trying, I'm trying and to we get are... out of that model. Yes, but... So uh, is the, it possible the... to think of Europe without that model? That's then my we question. Have, we have to change uh, the language we are using and our references. It is possible. It, it should, is be possible. Possible. should be possible. But at the same time, we'll be thinking in terms of concepts and uh, 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 the knowledge we have uh, inherited from uh, this I Greek. I know, I know. Well, let's say, instead of calling it Greek, why don't we call it the Mediterranean? Mediterranean. Uh, that I would be more culture. comfortable with that. Good. And I know that in your work, it's so important for you, all the African Christians, theologians, that we say, yeah. in the first and second century of Christianity. Judeo-Christian. Judeo-Christian, yes. of course. And my it, idea... it is from a Judeo-Christian uh, uh, concepts uh, in an ethics which is uh, Judeo-Christian mm. that uh, we, you are analyzing and raising uh, these questions. That's right. And there's going back to the Mediterranean culture. That's right. Even though the Mediterranean then, with Islam, makes it even more complex, and that is through the Arab authors that we get the, 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 the Greek tradition here in Toledo, here in, in Spain, That's through true. the translations that they were doing. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that suppose that the, these hypotheses, the, uh, Europe has very little to learn, is as scandalous as it would be for an African. I'm trying to position myself, it's difficult, it's an hypothesis, as an African in the 1815. I think that, that's when philosophy of history came out. You know, reading that passage, Africa is out of history and therefore has nothing to teach the world. What would an African think would be scandalous, as it is scandalous now, from a power position to ask that you have very little to teach. So my position is the reverse of Hegel, in a sense, as scandalous, but the problem is that I cannot answer this question on the basis of the same model. I have to go to the Europe of 1492, which is also an, an important date for you, in which, you know, this European corner here was an Islamic corner of the Euro-Asian continent. The Iberian Peninsula was very small and very marginal to the Ottoman Empire, to the, 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 That's the Caliphate and so on. That's fine. There are at least uh, two ways of uh, facing uh, your issue. Uh, by uh, reflecting on uh, uh, that passage from Hegel, situating the biography of Hegel's books, we know exactly when he was uh, uh, writing uh, uh, what, uh, and uh, one of the things we know, which uh, has been uh, reconstructed, uh, is that uh, Hegel uh, was extremely attentive to everything that uh, uh, was happening outside of the European experience, using the French model as, uh, yes, the example. Now, for Hegel, who was following literally week after week what was happening mm -hmm. in Haiti. Mm -hmm. That was a big e event. You had a bunch of uh, uh, black guys who defeated French, the French uh, army. Mm -hmm. now, now, that's a problem that Hegel 
was facing. It's not an invention. Yeah. And uh, it is possible for this uh, uh, colleague, aristocratic colleague from the University of Berlin, yeah, yes, to hypothesize what's happening there, what happened, uh, is not logical at all, uh, mm -hmm. because it goes against the experience of history. And then okay. we si you situate these black people, they come from where? Right. You exclude them from uh, history because what they represent is scandalous. What happened in Haiti, a bunch of former slaves, slaves mm -hmm. revolting and uh, defeating the best organized army in the world. Mm -hmm. And for Hegel, we have got written text. The yeah. future of Europe, it was Bonaparte. Yeah, that's right. It was the great liberation. Uh, so we have, idea. Got, we have got a key uh, that uh, a key can uh, lead us to say, let's distinguish what seems uh, uh, historically exotic uh, from uh, uh, what uh, Hegel represents in a history of uh, uh, ideas. And there you face, uh, yeah, we had uh, an experience, Hegel, Kant, and so on, uh, and uh, Africa. And when we take that position, it is possible to find a different, a different manner of reading that. And mm -hmm. I am reading it as an African born. I posit Descartes, Spinoza, Kant, Hegel. Mm -hmm. There is a continuity. Mm -hmm. And what Hegel says is not really scandalous when we compare and to Kant's right. anthropology, for That's example. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it is a narrative uh, which is That's inscribed uh, in uh, the very history mm -hmm. of uh, the West. So it, it looks like that if you want, in fact, uh, to uh, reinvent Europe <laughs> because of the colonial and capitalist past and present, we have to reinvent as well the other continents and the other cultures. Because after all, what we mean by Europe today is very much part of an imperial project that uh, it's not a very old one, but uh, a very powerful one, particularly from the mid 19th century onwards. And therefore, in order to ask these questions, uh, we have to ask other questions. That is to say, for instance, what is that Africa can teach to the world today? How do I ask, what is the epistemological stand for this question? That is to say, first, I raise the question, and I don't answer it, so it's just a question, but I have to pose it an entity called Africa. Then I have to pose another entity, another process or procedure, which the idea of teaching, which means that there is knowledge there, and that knowledge can be transmitted. So if that knowledge is, can be transmitted, Am I bound to think that whatever Africa has to teach to the world is based, after all, in the, the original sin of colonialism? Is Eurocentric in itself, even if it is against Eurocentrism? Is it possible to have a non-Eurocentric view? Yes, I think it is possible. Uh, to begin by uh, the very process of uh, uh, your uh, perception. Uh, Africa, uh, from uh, the conversation, uh, yeah, we have to take into uh, account uh, Kant's anthropology, Hegel's position, mm -hmm. and so on. This Africa is, well, the abnormality which is out there vis-à-vis uh, -vis the normality represented by the achievement mm -hmm. of uh, uh, Europe. Yeah. Now, we have got good concepts coming from uh, someone who uh, was educated as uh, uh, a philosopher. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, an aggregate of philosophy and uh, a contemporary of uh, Jean-Paul Sartre at the Ecole Normale, and uh, who, after uh, his uh, uh, philosophical uh, education, went to do medicine and uh, presented in uh, medicine uh, in early 1940 a doctoral dissertation on the normal and uh, the pathological. We have got in the French tradition the work of Georges Canguillem that allows us to think the tension between the normal and the pathological from a philosophical viewpoint and also with the accuracy of what medicine, natural sciences can allow us now. If you check 
the American version of the normal, the last one, the normal and the pathological, there is two, the, the, the book, a preface by Michel Foucault, mm -hmm. indicating that if you want to understand the movement that allowed the type of thinking you are presenting, uh, that is uh, just before uh, 1968 and uh, just after 1968, there is no way of uh, negating the discreet and the powerful presence of George Candier. Mm -hmm. Thus, it means that mm -hmm. we have got the concepts and the concepts that we can use uh, will be uh, to oppose a number of sets of, uh, of tension uh, defining, in fact, uh, Europe in the negative that is by positing what is abnormal. Uh, and you can so is Europe the pathological and the rest of the world the norm? Well, uh, in principle, uh, uh, you take uh, uh, the position uh, you want. You take mm -hmm. the position you want, uh, and uh, you can use uh, uh, three to follow. Uh, in this case, I am following uh, Michel Foucault. Uh, you take uh, life uh, for biology, and the representation of a uh, mm -hmm. scholar, for example. It's a question of power. I mean, you yes. can declare yes. what is normal and what is pathological. Yes, in a there sense. is. There is a way. You take life, you take work, labor, and you take language. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for uh, the three, you uh, try to see uh, the function as uh, it is presented vis-a-vis -a, -vis a norm mm -hmm. you are using. Mm -hmm. And uh, you consider labor, and uh, you oppose it to the rule how labor is functioning. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, you look at the uh, signification, and uh, you look at, uh, you oppose it uh, into uh, the system. If you decide, this is Michel Foucault's project, you decide to give a privilege to the first set over the second, mm -hmm. you create automatically two systems of knowledge, one which is negative, that is defining everything mm -hmm. in, uh, yes, this is normal, that's abnormal. If, but you see the trap, if, the trap if, of if, that. If you mm -hmm. take the other way around, and uh, which is what you are doing, you try to give a privilege uh, to, to the system, to uh, the rule, to the norm, everything. Anything can be respected and approached as a system in its own right. And then that's the revolution you are suggesting. Yeah. And the problem becomes how do we handle that? Because anything becomes, yes, a system in its own right, and there is no way of distinguishing what is normal and what is abnormal. There is probably a way, and this way is intercultural translation. That is to say, I, I, I see these totalities, but not at close totalities. Uh, I can see that there is a, the possibility, if you subvert the power relation, then, and you imagine an horizontal relationship, uh, and also you see the trappings of all these distinctions. Yes, that are you, are, you are because the European norm, privilege. Uh, you are giving that. privilege to the synchronic, uh, which is transcultural. And I am trying uh, to understand uh, the origin of uh, your perception uh, through the very history that gives you the concepts for uh, the project of mm -hmm. analysis, which is uh, synchronic. Mm -hmm. Then, there is a second point. You said tra translation. What about the possibility of things that uh, we don't and uh, we cannot translate? Definitely. The untranslatability yeah. Yeah. of, uh, yes, cultures. Yeah, well, the, the end, there is uh, this tendency that whenever you have these cultural differences, it, it is impossible. Uh, to translate and then the question of relativism that's what you are asking basically but i don't think so i think that the alternative is either an imperial position that determines the norm and the rest is either pathological or marginal or abnormal or whatever 
except for those that declare the norm, because those that declare the norm are considered exceptional. That is to say, look at this idea of Europe as normality and the rest as pathological, and then look at the Adorno, European universalism, that is to say, the exceptionalism, or Max Weber, the exceptionalism of Europe, say, whatever is a norm is also exceptional. Right. That is to say, it's the uniqueness of the West. And this trap, in my view, is, is, is produced by power relations, real, you know, sheer power relations. So if I undo that, through a struggle, then I am with the problem. Of course, I expand the experience of the world. I see much, many other experiences, many different kinds of plurality of truth, which, by, by the way, uh, is very Foucault, very many discourses of truth, so to say. Well, not only like that, you can use uh, uh, Marx also, and uh, what right. you are doing uh, is uh, to uh, invoke uh, a model that gives privilege uh, to uh, how uh, we can analyze uh, yeah, the tension existing uh, between uh, organization of production and the social relations of production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, from uh, that economic model, yes, uh, then uh, you move to uh, the uh, cultural and uh, you oppose uh, uh, the West to, uh, yeah, good, to the rest of us. Mm -hmm. My, My position is not, oh, it's just the opposite of that. That is, I'm not opposing. What I'm trying is to produce a reading of the West that allows for others to be self-represented in ways which are not objectifying, are not derivative, are not Western centrics. So what is in the North and the South that does not depend on dichotomy? What is in man and woman that not, does not depend on this polarity? What, what, what is in Africa and Europe that is not based on this polarization? That, that's correct. That's utopia, probably, but that's... Yes, uh, you are going a bit uh, too fast uh, because <laughs> the question you are raising is already there in uh, 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 Kangiem's uh, uh, The Normal and the Pathological. You can take uh, the two entries, one justifying the imperial model and uh, 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 illustration of the West, and uh, uh, the other model uh, making possible uh, the fact that uh, any system uh, could be approached from uh, its uh, own coherence, uh, its own rules uh, and norms, which is your model, in fact. Mm -hmm. It is the model you are uh, invoking. It's but an open model. It's an it open is an open model that allows like for translate face, for porosity. Yes, I am absolutely, yes, uh, with you, but uh, you and uh, we should face the issue that if we allow to understand that uh, expression in its own meaning, we have created something new, which is potentially, which potentially can destroy the, the culture. Could it? Yes, because How? any system, any being, any behavior becomes an organized structure with its own norms and its own rules. But there is no abnormality, there is no disease, mm -hmm. there is no aberration, there is no uh, uh, disorganization, anything, anyone, any behavior. I and have no in problems, terms of work, in I terms have no of problems life, with, with normativity, with normality, and with so on, provided that the methodology by which we arrive at those criteria are democratic, that is to say. If there is a kind of a, a radical democratic way of defining what is normal and pathological, I wouldn't be against. The problems that we have never had in history, such a situation. Normality no, are, is always, you know, no, we are, we, we are, in our society, it's always, it's always defined against someone which is submitted to our power, basically. That, that's correct. The pathological cannot say, the, patho I'm, the pathological you is... You are the norm and I'm the pathological. The, no, the pathological is what allows to posit the norm. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And uh, we are right. And uh, the problem uh, we are uh, raising, the, uh, the, it is a problem of method. How do we move from uh, understanding this uh, to an understanding, uh, yes, the possibility of uh, uh, dialogue and so on. And that comes to my mind uh, this uh, uh, statement of modesty uh, by uh, Michel de Serpeau, mm -hmm. nul ne parle de nulle part.
we speak always mm. from a locality okay. yeah. and uh, within a conceptual field. Mm. And uh, thus, back to the question you, you were raising, uh, which brings in a beautiful uh, passage of Michel Foucault in relation to Hegel. We are revolting against or à propos de model that gives us the very concepts we are using against it. But you see, that's my and disagreement that's with Foucault. Yeah, but my disagreement with Foucault comes precisely from that, is that he's trapped in a kind of a totality in which resistance becomes a form of power itself. That is to say, if I'm revolting on your model, but yeah. I'm using the instruments that your model had made available to me, then I'm trapped in your model and I cannot think outside. And it's interesting that you focus on Foucault, which I think may teach us something today for understanding the world, but not much, quite frankly. I, I think that Foucault is one of the most Eurocentric uh, thinkers, oh, yes, much more no, than Sartre, which no, is another yes, one. Absolutely. Sartre is the only he one He recognizes which... that. In the, it's quite explicit that uh, when he's uh, writing his books, and, uh, and uh, it was uh, just uh, after the publication of uh, 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 Les Mots et les mm -hmm. Choses, uh, and he's quite conscious that, yes, my geography, he says, yes, is European, and uh, if uh, you look carefully, uh, it is French. He is mm -hmm. conscious of that. And then you write uh, in opposition uh, uh, to uh, Sartre, and Sartre, yeah, Sartre was uh, a the world pro The problem uh, is that the, they, they recognize that. Abermas also recognizes that. But the people that read them in Latin America, in Africa, take them as universal theories. Yes, I indeed. I mean, Abermas says, well, my theory... The language, it is the language they are using. But this, uh, this imperialism the, is, not, is, is not an epistemology that is worth of us, because it's really a very imperial epistemology. Well, it is a, in fact, it is a question of uh, uh, power relations, mm -hmm. and uh, the power relations, if we want to continue, we look at uh, economics. And uh, thanks to uh, the economics that is the relationship of, in terms of power, we get a relationship in terms of politics and uh, in terms of knowledge. Yeah. And uh, then you have got a different uh, dimension, uh, which is uh, that of the history of disciplines. And uh, we have to go into the system to understand why Michel Foucault uh, might seem to be uh, uh, very important uh, compared to uh, the people who are uh, I quoted in my uh, uh, syllabus on uh, theories of uh, difference of uh, Hegel in Africa. We have got Africans writing books now on Hegel. Yeah, and, and very good that's books. a challenge. That's yeah, a challenge. Yeah. Professor Mudimbi, so we have been uh, discussing the possibilities of getting out of Eurocentrism, in a sense, because of the models that we use to understand and to criticize those very models. So um, the alternative to uh, uh, Eurocentrism or ethnocentrism and so on has been the concept of universalism. And uh, this is another uh, trap, I would say, of normality and of norm, because uh, in the Western tradition, the universal is always superior to the local. So is the norm versus the pathological, in a sense, in a different version, right? So sometimes I wonder whether the universalism is a good starting point for a conversation. It looks like that is a, a much better starting point for conversion. And in fact, it was historically more for conversion than for conversation. But then, if you abandon the concept of universalism, it looks like that we are back into that problem that you raised and duly, uh, you very well raised before, that if you have all these different systems and, uh, and they don't speak to each other, and probably there are problems in translation, then so what? So what is the kind of the world? Is it more enriched yeah. in cultural terms or is more destructive? I mean, I think we have to confront it uh, or are there other yeah. kinds of universalism, bottom-up? Uh, absolutely, up. absolutely, you're right. The issue you are raising is, uh, again, uh, immense. And uh, my suggestion would be, can we find 
uh, models thanks to which we can think uh, that uh, universalism uh, you are, uh, uh, yes, uh, interested in, we are interested in. And uh, I would suggest, uh, again, uh, in order to control exactly the uh, rigor of uh, the analysis we are doing, to consider uh, three models. One, Claude Lévi-Strauss, who is a philosopher who converted to anthropology, Claude Lévi-Strauss, the savage mind, and uh, the, whole, the, the whole project of uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss. And uh, number two, uh, to consider a second model uh, represented by uh, uh, Pierre Bourdieu, and uh, uh, with uh, uh, Pierre Bourdieu, uh, to look at uh, the symbolic and uh, real violence on how the education system is uh, reproducing itself, and uh, oppose two types of uh, 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 criteria. Uh, one, a prophetic uh, uh, criterion or illustration, and uh, a, a another one, uh, the priestly, the sacerdotal function. Uh, thus, uh, the prophet, uh, people want to change everything, and then vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, those who are in charge. And my position would be, well, I am on the sacerdotal model of those who try to understand the system as uh, it is uh, functioning in uh, its uh, own uh, right, and uh, then uh, make sure that we can uh, situate ourselves vis-à-vis -vis the prophetic explorations like yours. And uh, then we move to uh, a last model. Uh, is there, within this tradition, uh, a model uh, that uh, can uh, allow us to move uh, according to the requirement of uh, uh, disciplines and uh, to consider other traditions? I say, yes, Paul Ricoeur. Mm -hmm. Now, concretely, if I go back to Claude Lévi-Strauss, uh, uh, what I am getting uh, is uh, uh, simply the conjunction, the possibility of uh, uh, facing uh, the conjunction of uh, the sociological practice and uh, in the anthropological practice. At a given moment, in uh, this reflection, which is theoretical, made with the conceptualities from the Western tradition, at a given moment, yes, the reflecting uh, 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 subject is there assuming uh, two ways of speaking about his her own culture or any other culture that is moving uh, from the conscious documentation into a reflection on uh, the unconscious that uh, can be read uh, within uh, any tradition. And at the same time, uh, the same person would be in principle capable of uh, facing, any anthropologist uh, supposedly do it, of facing the unconscious of uh, a cultural experience and then uh, translates, uh, translate it, if uh, we can say it is a translation, into uh, the uh, written, the uh, conscious. This. Mm -hmm. That's first uh, model, uh, which is uh, the Levis, uh, Levis but, but, but let model. But let me interject there, uh, uh, because I think that, uh, you know, there are claims that you are making and uh, Levi-Strauss makes, which I, I think, in my view, are in a sense exaggerated. That is to say, if we start from the point of view that our knowledge, and we were discussing that earlier, uh, is always based on our standpoint and context, what allows me to believe that Levi-Strauss going to Brazil, to the Indian tribes, gets out of, its, of his context and analyzes in absolute abs objectivity and neutrality the lives and the conceptual nature of the savage. How can I do that on this assumption? He is in fact transposing to, the, to them, you know, conceptual analysis and the conceptual configurations of knowledge and understanding that are very European in a sense. Yes, indeed. So they are not we universal. Are, we are forcing, uh, we are, what Lévi-Strauss is uh, trying to do is uh, a, a, to oppose two types mm. of uh, sciences. 
And uh, he is quite explicit about that in opposing the science of the concrete and uh, the science mm. of uh, uh, the abstract. And, uh, and this, uh, uh, the conjunction of uh, the idea of history that exists in any culture and to the idea of uh, 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 an anthropology of any culture. And thus it is possible to do, to try to reflect or to be critical uh, about this model uh, within uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the European space and uh, elsewhere. Then in doing that, we are eating an idea of uh, uh, Pierre Bourdieu, the reproduction of the system, uh, the education uh, we are transmitting are violence ways of approaching anything. This is what we are teaching, in fact. And uh, some of us, well... It, there, there is a tradition of the Eurocentric form of formal education, which starts in the 19th century, in fact, in the ways it, it, uh, it was, because, and it is now very formalized, very separated of the, of the lives of the people. And then at my university here, where we are now, here, I mean, people in the Middle Ages would come and go to classes without any schedule, without any time. The professor would be there. The people would leave when, whenever they were tired. Well, it was a very more informal and probably more plural type of knowledge. When you think, and that's again my, my, my criticism of book here, we take education as the Euro Eurocentric education. That's correct. But look, Paul let's, Frey, let's, uh, let's the popular me, education. People have always me, been educated in it Africa. Is a, it is exactly the, the point I am trying to make also. But uh, by trying to be uh, uh, systematic, and uh, let's use, let's bring mm -hmm. in a third model uh, that uh, Paul Ricoeur mm -hmm. and uh, posit, uh, posit the possibility of uh, creating uh, a conflict of uh, interpretation uh, through a, an approach that uh, would distinguish in any culture uh, uh, foundational sagas mm -hmm. and uh, their expressions. And uh, number two, a second level uh, of uh, everyday life uh, philosophy that is the way we interact and uh, explain and uh, transmit uh, our uh, knowledge. And then comes in uh, a, yes, a third level of what we call disciplines. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have in mind uh, the European model, the Western model, and uh, it is possible from that model uh, to raise the question of how something else uh, might be functioning out there. And that uh, comes in what uh, we can uh, say is a philosophical level thanks to which uh, we can oppose a semiological mm -hmm. uh, approach to a uh, hermeneutical one. With uh, Paul Ricoeur, we have created an hypothesis that can be, in principle, transplanted and uh, uh, used in uh, uh, any uh, uh, culture. That's a way of creating a transcultural project and uh, speaking to get uh, the same language and uh, trying to uh, recreate, uh, yes, the tension suggested by uh, Levi-Strauss, uh, for example, the tension between a science of the concrete and a science of the abstract. But, but you see, but, yeah, you know, let, let's pursue that because I, I think that's very interesting. You know, they conceived of the science of the concrete and, you know, Levi-Strauss of the abstract. Try to look at that from other perspective, a different perspective. Yes. How can we conceive of the Western science as abstract, of the science of abstract, where in fact it was the most uh, intrusive forms of science in the lives of people, in the lives of nature, in the life of natives, in the lives of people. In the name of science, we destroyed populations, committed genocides, we did the Holocaust, as you are very much aware, and you criticize that. So it was very concrete. The problem is that for uh, Levi-Strauss is abstract whatever is rendered conceptually. In a sense, something that is independent of the context in which it is developed. Yes, what you're saying is, uh, is just uh, uh, marvelous. Uh, you are proving a, a right uh, and uh, understanding that uh, can be uh, served, can be defined uh, simply. Descartes says, 
our predicament is that we have been children. Mm -hmm. We have been trained, we have been uh, conditioned, and we have been uh, given uh, uh, a method uh, by which uh, we can try to understand who we are, but uh, mm -hmm. also how other people are. Mm -hmm. But with the model of Paul Ricoeur, we create conflict of interpretations, and uh, we become students of any culture, Mm -hmm. trying to understand the, the foundational saga of any culture, mm -hmm. any civilization, and uh, how there is, uh, well, uh, everyday life uh, practice, uh, which is uh, functioning also as a system of knowledge transmitted uh, from generation to generation. And then uh, something like, uh, we call it a philosophy, if you, uh, you wish. No, we call it a disciplines in the plural. And uh, in uh, the West, we have got a model. In uh, 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 another culture, we can have uh, uh, another model. And uh, in actuality there, we are positing the possibility of uh, a practice which might be universal. That is, on the one hand, the inspiration of uh, history, and uh, on the other hand, uh, the inspiration of uh, anthropology. They can be transplanted. Mm. And uh, we have created an approach to any culture which possibly can be actualized from inside. It can be actualized and can be probably transcended. That is to say, I, I think that uh, this idea that you, and you have been very critical of the disciplines also because you have been involved yes. in the Open to Social Science project and so on. So to focus too much on the disciplines as they are and, and particularly look at, uh, at the colonial library and the role of anthropology, I think that you are granting too much uh, leverage to anthropology, I'm not talking about philosophical anthropology, but anthropology... I am very a, critical of anthropology. But you Very think that is, part, that, that is it possible, you know, to think outside the box of the disciplines? Because, you know, I, I just give you the example. Uh, yeah, I have got a good example, Yeah, which is the following, because I lived it with uh, Robert Betts and uh, Jean Obar. Uh, we faced the question, uh, we wanted to know, is it possible to prove to all the big bosses, uh, the big people uh, of uh, uh, the American universities and uh, all uh, the, uh, the president of universities and uh, the foundations and the people who have money. Uh, we need money for our research in, uh, uh, in Kenya or in Guatemala mm -hmm. uh, and in Africa. And then uh, the big boss uh, says to us, could you tell me what's the contribution of uh, Africa to uh, a science. So here we are, Gino Barr, a specialist of women's studies, mm -hmm. uh, Robert Betts, uh, a political scientist, and myself. We say, what can we do in order to create an event and uh, to make anyone go silent? We could have chosen botany, zoology, paleoanthropology, mm -hmm. and we could have chosen very, very easy disciplines like that, in which, in fact, since the 19th century, a huge contribution comes from African experiences. Mm -hmm. No, we chose the most difficult disciplines, history, literature, philosophy. And we wrote that book, it was more than 10 years ago, with the contribution of uh, uh, colleagues, we say, could you prove to us what is the contribution of uh, uh, Africa to history of art and to, hist to literature and to philosophy? And uh, the book is there circulating and uh, making a difference. Mm -hmm. What you are demanding might be, yeah, is it possible to have done that from uh, inside a different culture? Mm -hmm. Right. That is from the African culture itself. In, yeah, why not? 
But, you, but in your work, for instance, you distinguish very well or, or very often between philosophy and the African systems of thought. Correct. Uh, as if, uh, you know, the adjectives, uh, African philosophy, Bantu philosophy, even though sometimes you say I have nothing against those uh, adjectives and so on. But for you, there is a thing called philosophy, and yeah. that is Greek. Yes, it is uh, Greek, yeah. We can say that uh, there is something called the mathematics. But then you, uh, you have adjectives there, because it's yeah, Greek philosophy it, then. It, it, well, mathematics Why is, is it Greek. universal? Mathematics is universal, but uh, the, uh, the uh, inscription in the history of mathematics, uh, in the case of uh, today's, uh, in practice, it goes back to the Greeks. No. I have nothing uh, uh, Not about necessarily. that. Not necessarily. Yeah, about you know, philosophy. Who invented the zero? Who okay. invented yeah, the zero? Arabs. <laughs> no, 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 not Arabs. It comes the from Sans India. Sanskrit. It comes from India. From zero. Sanskrit, of course. Yes. Yeah. Now, the issue is different. The issue is to distinguish the genealogy mm -hmm. of the sciences uh, from. Uh, the genealogies uh, of uh, uh, systems of knowledge. If uh, we choose that method, uh, we can uh, make the distinctions uh, in uh, any culture. And uh, so far, when we speak of sciences, uh, of astronomy, or uh, biology, mathematics, or philosophy, we are speaking of these courses, if you wish, whose history goes back to the Greeks. In the West, uh, unlike in uh, uh, any other system, uh, uh, we have uh, systems of knowledge. And uh, in a number of uh, African cultures, uh, we have uh, about uh, herbs, or about uh, uh, knowledge of animals, or uh, knowledge of uh, stars, the, the mm -hmm. Dogon, for example. Yes, they've got a very complex system of uh, knowledge of stars, and that but is uh, it not is not philosophy. astronomy. It is not no. astronomy. It is a respectable and a respected uh, system of knowledge. Mm -hmm. It can be translated. It has been uh, translated by, uh, uh, by uh, scholars, and uh, now we can uh, read it. We are reading it with uh, glasses. Mm -hmm of uh, the Western tradition. I grant that, but, uh, but, but, but I grant at the same time the fact that the reason why they are not astronomy is because we have conceptualized as astronomy yeah. forms of science of which, in fact, the Aztecs in, in Mexico had much earlier and much before or the Chinese civilization had, and we never called them astronomy. If we look at Joseph Needham's Science and Civilization in China, yes. you can see that yes. many of the things that we say about the Western science and astronomy yes. has been there for thousands of years. So I think there is an Eurocentric narrative about the uniqueness and the universality, which is very contradictory to me because it's both unique and universal. Wouldn't it be better to broaden the experience? That's why I come back to the idea of interculturality, to the possibilities not trashing the, the Western tradition in any way, even though we should acknowledge the complexity or internal complexity, and we were discussing this, why, you know, I, I do not put in the same foot a Pascal with, uh, with uh, all the 19th century people, and, uh, or Montaigne, or, or whatever, there are differences. And the Spinoza and so on, you know, Deus sive natura, you know, this conception of, of God would never be a good conception for the missionaries in, uh, in, in Americas and in, in Africa. So there were different conceptions in the Western tradition. But if you now try with this more humble, in fact, more humble idea that there are different ways of expressing, so I would have no problem in conceiving of sagacity or orucas philosophy as philosophy. Uh, I wouldn't say, well, philosophy yes. is Greek. No, why? Uh, philosophy is uh, Greek uh, in terms of uh, uh, tradition, in terms of mm -hmm. uh, conceptualities, and uh, in terms of uh, ways of uh, transmitting it, that's one thing. And uh, in uh, different cultures, uh, non-Western cultures, uh, uh, we have also systems of knowledge. Mm -hmm. If uh, we decide to call them, yeah, the Weltaschkangen mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Africa or uh, Latin mm -hmm. America, yes, they are organized 
and uh, open systematic uh, systems of knowledge. And uh, we can translate them uh, into French or uh, into English and uh, teach those uh, mm -hmm. systems of knowledge uh, within a class of philosophy. Uh, because we are submitted to the tradition mm -hmm. that uh, tells us what is astronomy by the method of mm -hmm. uh, doing astronomy. The same for physics and uh, the same for philosophy. Now, nothing, absolutely nothing, uh, prevents us from uh, accepting uh, the idea we use every day. There is a philosophy of uh, MDs uh, in, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, the United States, which is uh, different from the German. Uh, there is a philosophy of, uh, let's say, younger people uh, living uh, in the desert uh, of uh, Africa in Sahara. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a highly remarkable series of books Mm -hmm. which uh, uh, are called uh, uh, classic African, mm -hmm. African classics. Right. Yes, uh, it is presented uh, systematically with uh, notations uh, mm -hmm. very demanding, uh, with uh, uh, a translation in it. And uh, if we want to call that philosophy, I have absolutely nothing yeah, uh, to, uh, to say. And uh, I can go so far as uh, to say, please consider the present day tradition of the practice of the discipline. We have got this tension, which when you reflect about that, uh, it makes you smile. Analytical philosophy, mm. which is uh, Anglo-Saxon, quote unquote, mm -hmm. and then continental philosophy, uh, which is, uh, which is, uh, yeah, European. Mm -hmm. Now, when personally, I hear someone speak of French philosophy, German philosophy. I <laughs> say there is something ridiculous there because it doesn't make sense at all. Mm -hmm. I don't imagine Plato one morning. I don't imagine uh, uh, Jean Paul Sartre one morning. Mm -hmm. I don't imagine Hegel uh, getting up uh, uh, one morning and stating, I am going to write something which is German philosophy. Well, of course, What well. they did was to get up and to decide to solve a concrete or theoretical problems according to a method uh, we, yes, we call philosophy. And then it is only a posteriori that uh, we come in and uh, we say, yeah, reading uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, we have the feeling that there is something French which is uh, different from uh, Heidegger, although he's very close to Heidegger which is more German. Mm -hmm. And But, uh, there is mm -hmm. something uh, different, uh, let's say, in uh, what uh, you are saying, in fact, uh, which might be more Portuguese than uh, Italian. My point, Professor, is that the adjective French or German or Greek is an adjective that uh, qualifies something a posteriori. Okay, and I grant that, and if that's so, I would like to, to see what would, in 50 years, be considered African about your way of thinking. Because you say that you don't wake up in the morning and say, well, I'm going to write African philosophy. No. Of course not. But someone in the future will probably tell us or tell the, our, our, our descendants that what Budimbo was doing was uh, African philosophy or what Boaventura was doing was Portuguese philosophy. What in your case would you think would make your way of thinking an African philosophy? Well, I don't think uh, in the question is uh, uh, pertinent because living uh, in uh, this uh, uh, world we are sharing today with the system of communication uh, mm -hmm. and uh, interacting uh, uh, almost every day and so on. Well, I think that all these adjectives we are using, post-colonial, uh, nomadic, uh, and mm. so on, uh, will be uh, revised. And uh, I can say this, for example. The adjective African doesn't make sense when uh, you reflect that uh, God knows why. We have uh, divided uh, the continent. Uh, there is 
uh, North Africa. We don't imply anything there, but uh, there is a racial component uh, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the expression. There is a Sub-Sahara Africa, the same there is. There is a South Africa, doesn't make sense. There is a, a second dimension also to accent the point. An Africa, what is an African? We have got white people who were born in, in the Congo or in Senegal, educated there, and then the, today they are living in Germany or in mm -hmm. England. But uh, their memories, their education, they, they were born in Africa. The connotation black and Africa, strictly speaking, is a, 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 a notation with uh, racial implications and uh, then uh, we are facing a question about uh, what is it uh, and uh, mm -hmm. what is a rest. There is something else mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Africa. No, I fully Africa agree with you. Is, uh, uh, yes, conceived from the relationship existing uh, historically between, yes, Europe, North, and Africa, but, but, South. But, but, Modrin, but Af and, uh, Europe forget. is the precisely the same. Yes, I mean, yeah, we, you, and, uh, we harmonize, we yes. create a monolithic yeah, entity of Europe, yeah. Well, in fact, there has been, you know, historically speaking, many Europe's, there was racism inside Europe, uh, from the north versus the south, there were centers and periphery throughout uh, European history, and therefore, today, we have all the immigrants and people that were born two, three generations, okay. they are Europeans, and yes. they are not considered as such. So, yeah. I think that's the same. The same and that's why the question, I, 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 I agree with you, but what I sense in your analysis is that because of this deconstruction uh, of the of these uh, continental divides and the adjectives and so on, which I, I fully share with you, you make a move which I don't make. That is to say, my move is to interculturality. That is to say, expand the diversity of the world and try to make comparisons, contrasts, and for instance, in my work, I, I do, for instance, the conceptions of human dignity that come from human rights, uh, uh, compared with the concept of Dharma in Hinduism or the concept of Uma in Islam. Different conceptions of human dignity, all of them problematic in one way or the other, and so on. But I don't make the move toward transculturality, and I think that you do that move. And I'd like to learn from you why it is easy for you to be sometimes critical of interculturality, but you make the move of transculturality very easily, which in my view is a zenzucht. Is uh, okay. you are homesick yes. of, of universality, basically. That's what I'm trying to suggest. There is a, a very simple way of reformulating uh, uh, your interrogation. It mm -hmm. would be an expression that uh, comes very frequently in uh, your writing uh, to eradicate uh, Eurocentrism. Mm -hmm. And about that, I, do, I would say this. One, and if we could clarify the uniqueness of uh, this uh, generous concept that we call Eurocentrism. And uh, two, accept also what is obvious that you, anyone, European, non-European, would fit this expression of the late uh, Michel de Certeau, mm -hmm. no one uh, speaks from uh, nowhere. And this, what we call Eurocentrism, uh, is not a disease. It mm -hmm. is the condition of uh, speaking uh, from uh, a locality. And uh, number two, why should we posit in a priori about the practice of a discipline and, uh, and thus promote a controversial expression? French philosophy or German philosophy or even Greek philosophy, they don't exist. They are conceptualities. No. Yeah, these are uh, the, the denominations we conceived uh, a posteriori in order to qualify a cultural difference we can see in uh, the uh, renderings. And this a radical orderness, another one of your expression, uh, might be slippery, a slippery concept because it is fundamentally political. And uh, we know that uh, when uh, the political 
begins to be the only reference in uh, a discipline, uh, it is very dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Uh, my question is uh, 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 the following. In your, in your thinking, it's is very clear that the Western tradition is imperialism, and you grant that. Yes, indeed. Very yeah. But you see there the seeds also of emancipation. Correct. Which is, comes very close to what I've also been thinking, that yeah. Western modernity is yeah. social regulation on one yes. side and social emancipation You're on right. the other side. My problem has been, and I don't know if you are uh, facing this, is how to develop a, a kind of emancipatory practice or thinking that does not get prey of the perversity of becoming a new regulation. That is to say, a new authoritarianism, a new political perversion and despotism, in a sense. And in a sense, sometimes even the concept of, you know, I'm being very self-critical here, even though emancipation is, uh, is quite uh, uh, important for me, uh, all of a sudden I see many different narratives of emancipation, peoples and groups that uh, uh, refuse to use the concept because emancipation was for the slaves and slaves have been emancipated and we should not be talking about that and they speak instead of dignity, and sometimes not even human dignity. It's a dignity that involves and encompasses nature as well. Yes. So yeah, are yeah. there different languages? Is, this is what I call intercultural translation, but never reaches the point of a transculturality, because I, I agree with Certeau. If there is a impossibility of speaking from nowhere, transculturality is also from somewhere. And if he's somewhere, he's not trans. Okay. He's inter. In fact, uh, in, and uh, in a brief, uh, what uh, you are saying uh, is this. It is possible, uh, theoretically, it is possible uh, to consider anything concerning life, anything concerning labor, anything concerning language. It is possible uh, to consider that as a being in uh, its own right, a system with uh, its internal uh, uh, rules and uh, indeed uh, with uh, its uh, uh, proper uh, norms. Mm -hmm. This means uh, in actuality, I am uh, referring to Michel Foucault this time, this means in actuality that we have, by uh, following you, we have decided that the tension existing between normality and abnormality doesn't exist any longer. Now, I'd say, yes, theoretically, we can go that far, but then let's just bring back the basic conceptualities that led you into mm. this uh, uh, wonderful position. We speak about life, we speak about labor, about life, uh, we have people uh, we, who, who are, uh, whose behavior is problematic, or uh, we have got uh, physiological problems that make them different. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday I was with uh, a friend uh, who's uh, monovisual. We have said that uh, there is nothing, there is no tension between, uh, yes, uh, regular, normal, vis-a-vis -vis the abnormal. And uh, we move to labor. Okay. With your principle, everything is fine, but what is, in terms of uh, commonality, the comparison between uh, slave labor and uh, uh, labor of uh, uh, people in uh, Dakar, uh, uh, Africans mm -hmm. or not? And uh, we, we add uh, the issue about uh, language, the conceptuality, which is language. And uh, from your position, uh, the same, any language uh, uh, is a system in its own right uh, with... Uh, no, I, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, the problem is, please look at the implications by bringing these uh, three mm -hmm. conceptualities, Humble. life, mm. labor, and language. And uh, you can I'll, I'll give you my, I will give you my response. It is terrifying. No, uh, uh, but it is not. Uh, well, first of all, 
you, in a sense, uh, uh, distort, uh, you know, friendly, uh, my position by saying that they are systems. I don't consider that system is the only way of conceptualizing an entity. It is, of course, in our tradition, and whenever you see something that uh, reveals some kind of homogeneity and coherence, we call it system, and from there to call it a closed system, like Niklas Luhmann and so on, it is very easy. I don't think that we need those systems. Then, in your French tradition, I would say, I would be more in favor of rhizomatic type of thinking using Deleuze yeah. than prob probably the system. Secondly, I don't think that my position is the norm versus pathological. I don't, I, I, I question that because I question power relations. But my, my key concept here is the just and the unjust. That is to say, there are ethical values that have to be constructed interculturality. And what you are telling me is that the intercultural uh, construction of a value system is impossible. And that is terrifying. Because if it is not possible to be the unjust, for instance, for life, yeah, of course. I mean, what is the norm? I have no problems, you mean. An homosexual for me is as normal as heterosexual. Even for some, it's pathological. As, as, as now in Brazil, in the Commission of Human Rights uh, in Brazil, in the Congress, which is quite terrifying for me. It's not the question. It's the question of, I consider that on an ethical base that improves the aspiration of human to be human. Humanity, humankind as an aspiration, not as a reality. Because in our Western conception, humanity always go together with subhumanity. Women were subhuman, slaves were subhuman. Indigenous had a soul only after 1537, after the bull of the Pope Paul III. That is to say, we have always conceived forms of exclusion. I'm really revolting against that, and I'm trying to have a broader sense of reciprocity. And this is justice, cognitive justice and justice but interculturally constructed. So it's not terrifying in the sense that I'm closing. I'm creating closed systems, and I cannot do an ethical evaluation of these systems, and they cannot communicate. This is very, I say, a very Western form of imperial uh, cornering the others. But uh, can we use uh, uh, a mathematical, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a formal, uh, uh, no, can we use a reference, let's say, into a relationship uh, between totalities that's mm. neutral uh, and uh, it's uh, in uh, logic? Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and we can imagine uh, two totalities interfering and uh, the space of interference. Mm -hmm. Well, we can uh, name it uh, as uh, attesting, uh, actualizing uh, a partial relations of uh, inclusion. Or we can also say it reveals a partial uh, relation of uh, exclusion. Mm. And uh, that's objective. It's right. purely mm. logical and mathematical. Mm -hmm. Now, if we move with that model to the context of uh, uh, a culture, by the way, my language, everyday language, is not English. Mm. It is Spanish. And then at school, I speak English. And uh, with a number of French, uh, well, I sp my children, I speak French. Now, this is a concrete, I would say, illustration of uh, a lived uh, 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 existence uh, which linguistically moves always uh, uh, into relations of partial inclusion, that can be said partial exclusion mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And this we are back. Do we really need uh, to promote uh, the negative that is a partial exclusion instead of yeah, naming the difference? No. By emphasizing uh, difference too strongly, we are, uh, in fact, uh, uh, promoting the idea of uh, a kind of untranslatability 
uh, of uh, human experiences and uh, communication of systems of knowledge and so on. And uh, recent five centuries, if we look at them, no, we can say yes, almost. Uh, let's say we go back uh, to the 15th century, the end of the 15th century. The geographical expansion of European culture. And then we follow century after century that expansion through economics, the exploitation of the world. Mm -hmm. Number two, coloni colonization of Americas and uh, African contacts uh, and uh, evangelization uh, and uh, politics of Christianization, mm -hmm. invention of uh, Christian communities. In... Then one says, no, something happened. Mm -hmm. It is empirical, it is uh, visible. Uh, people have been converting and uh, people... Yeah, it means that we might, for a change, decide to emphasize that capacity of uh, uh, contact and the communication. And the, it, it's not a mystery, the African uh, Christian is a Christian period. Yeah. And uh, you find yeah. conservative and the people who are revolutionary, uh, uh, like both and so on in, in Africa uh, also. But we are, there yeah. we are in agreement there. It, it, yeah, you know, absolutely. I, I want absolutely. this commonality. What I'm very concerned is about the ways in which we build that commonality and therefore the power relations, because there are different ways. When we go back, and I, I hope that today we'll be discussing the, con the concept of métissage and the la pensée métisse, tout ça, we can go back to that. And, and of course, there is forms of hybridization that uh, are not just the rape of black women by white uh, uh, colonizers or by, as we did in Portuguese, colonialism very yes. much. There is other kinds of hybridization based on love on horizontal relationships. So what I'm trying to say is this commonality, fine, but on whose terms and under which conditions. So therefore, emphasizing difference for me is the first step to build new commonalities. Is there any way in which we can search for commonality on more respect for diversity? No, it's a, it's a, it's a huge question, uh, and uh, the response would be, yeah, we have got uh, disciplines, uh, the social sciences, for example, and then uh, we have got uh, uh, disciplines uh, which are completely different, uh, mathematics, for example, or physics, uh, their application uh, is the same, uh, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, the conditions of application can be modified and uh, try uh, and uh, adapted uh, and so on. And thus there is a necessary uh, a prudence uh, uh, which would uh, distinguish uh, uh, disciplines that uh, uh, seem to be uh, universally mm -hmm. applicable everywhere. Seems, I say seem. That's right. Uh, uh, and uh, number two, uh, then uh, disciplines uh, which are uh, very young disciplines, for example, sociology mm -hmm. and uh, uh, even anthropology, these are uh, uh, young, very young disciplines. They have no history, really. really? Yeah. They have no history, not yet. but. You write, uh, you write uh, the uh, theoretical position uh, about the South also is uh, to be uh, perceived as a, as a geography. But why do we have to oppose it to the West? Can you imagine we are opposing the South to the West in the language? <laughs> which, which is awkward. And sometimes, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, secondly, sometimes north. we say that uh, it is identical to the tension between the South and the North. Mm. Thus, the West is uh, simultaneously the uh, North, and uh, it is the North which is the West. Well, it doesn't make sense. But the fact that uh, we do that, and uh, very easily, even uh, in our scientific publications, indicates the conceptual confusion with which we are doing ah, intercultural studies. Your way of thinking sounds to me very, very Christian, and you know, for, uh, for uh, you know, historical reasons and biographical reasons and so on, even though you consider yourself today agnostic, as no, you say I, in one text. 
Agnosticism uh, is uh, an intellectual position, yeah, yeah. and uh, the intellectual position is one of suspending judgment and uh, being uh, critical of uh, one's own uh, uh, spiritual uh, uh, tradition. Yeah, but I, I grant that I feel myself very much coming from a Christian tradition and uh, having been Catholic uh, and a practicing Catholic until my when I was 17 years of age or 20 years of age, and a very serious one. I can understand that. I can understand and I, and I share your view in that. What, what I don't see is that why you are so afraid of acknowledging the diversity of the world when such diversity is there in front of our eyes, and why is it so threatening? to consider it, because we need some extra thing. Well, there has been always extra things. Sometimes they are drones, sometimes the military uh, power. The military power has often decided many conflicts of diversity. I you know. know. So th there Not has only been that. Extra. The diversity uh, principle, uh, which is uh, highly respectable because it has got a motivation and uh, uh, about which uh, there is no discussion uh, uh, whatsoever. We accept that uh, human dignity is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. And then in the name of human uh, dignity, uh, we go on uh, promoting uh, diversity sections mm -hmm. about gender, about uh, sexual orientations, about, uh, yes, cultures. I am a black African. I'm going to live uh, in a home with the uh, black, black Africa and so on. And uh, progressively, these uh, diversity cells uh, are uh, reproducing uh, something uh, that uh, uh, makes one remember of uh, the diversity of races and classification of mm -hmm. races. And then, automatically, the, some of the implications, and they are functioning already, we cease to be racist, and uh, we become uh, racist, because it's uh, a scientific racism, which is an effect of uh, the diversity principle. And uh, we have to read uh, the tension between, uh, let's say, genders, and uh, the diversity ex existing between, uh, let's say, uh, what I, I call the community of uh, women. We have to read that uh, in terms of what? The only conceptualities we have got, uh, they come from uh, natural history. The same uh, between uh, the so-called racist. And uh, we have already, I am absolutely sure of that, we have created a new type of racism. It is scientific, and uh, it is invisible. Mm -hmm. And it is possible mm, to manipulate the diversity principles for political reasons or in uh, universities for the promotion of uh, invisible inequalities. We are fully there. I, I, I agree with that. I, uh, you know, I have no problems with that, but what I think that the, the perversion of diversity exists also in its opposite. That is to say, in the negation of diversity. Because the negation of diversity have been used very often to suppress differences, yes. which are honorable. I mean, the recognition of difference that, that women have been claiming was a very positive recognition. I mean, they are men and women, they are equal and they are different. Uh, the indigenous people, they have been, first, they were not human, then they were subhuman, now they are fully human, and they have their own culture and their own cosmovisions. So the recognition of difference is not bad in itself. The manipulation of difference and diversity is. But the same people that now are manipulating diversity were the ones that were man manipulating Universalism, yes. the, the, the monotheism, the monolithic cultures, whatever is not European is savage, whatever is not Christian is barbarian. You know, the manipulation is there. And, and why is there? Because there are power relations. So it's not diversity that is wrong, it's the power relations that may be underlying. 
this diversity. So for me, no, that's there why... Is, there is an interrelation. You posit uh, uh, the diversity principles, mm -hmm. you create a new type of leaders, and uh, that new type of leaders uh, are going to be uh, in uh, sit conflictual situations. What is your situation? Well, if you criticize diversity, as you are saying, and you are doing a very radical critique of diversity, in the name of what? Uh, yeah, in the name of uh, uh, its tradition. Uh, in the name of a tradition uh, that accepts uh, uh, nothing uh, without uh, uh, reflecting on uh, the implications. And that is, it's a paradox, by being critical of uh, diversity, I can uh, name uh, what I call a scientific racism, uh, which is not uh, visible, but which is functional. And uh, by being uh, anti-racist, uh, I can also name uh, a right to an alterity uh, which could be qualified in the name of diversity. Is there a distinction? Many people today make that, and myself, and uh, when I work with several communities, particularly in Latin America, the distinction between religion and spirituality. You may be agnostic vis-a-vis... -vis Methodologically concept. agnostic. Methodologically agnostic, but recognizing the concept of spirituality. What is the difference between religion and spirituality, if any? I, sometimes I... Uh, etymologically, religion, you can uh, think of religion as uh, something uh, linked. Mm. Uh, I am thinking of... Uh, uh, well, the ligare. etymology, well, uh, uh, yes, uh, from Benveniste, mm -hmm. uh, ligare, what uh, bring uh, uh, people together. You can also think of religion as uh, having the concept of lex, that is what is uh, uh, representing uh, uh, a law or uh, a norm or a regulation. But it is possible uh, to conceive religion, uh, at least from my viewpoint, uh, from a strictly uh, agnostic uh, view uh, point, uh, I should insist, throughout of these years, I have uh, people accompanying me mm -hmm. who are Roman Catholic priests who are very close and uh, who know what I am doing. And according to them, yes, uh, it is uh, a very good experiment in something about, about the truth, the truth uh, in this sense, and uh, we are back to a political commitment, which is not a violent an engagement, mm. which is not uh, 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 being uh, a member of uh, uh, a party, uh, which is uh, uh, simply a disposition about what is a truth. Why do there we is, need the, do there, I, yeah, there is a definition. And, uh, uh, but spirituality, we have not addressed the concept of spirituality. Is it different, the, the, brother? The truth and the spirituality are in interconnected. Here is a definition that uh, I can use, uh, which is very simple. It comes, uh, I believe, uh, from Michel Foucault. There is a truth uh, which is uh, the truth of an empirical experience of the senses. By using my hand against this, uh, uh, this chair, I am feeling it. It is true. There is a truth of that nature. Uh, there is a second type of truth, uh, which seems like uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, imaginary uh, invention, something uh, like uh, uh, an illusion. And, uh, Spirituality is uh, that type of uh, truth. It is like an illusion, and uh, it uh, is uh, something modifying itself according to the expectation of uh, the individuals or according to the personal dispositions. And, uh, this, but then it is as truthful as a dream. It is not a dream. It is something which is uh, individual and uh, which is uh, real, uh, uh, people who believe in uh, the Holy Trinity, for example, uh, they are strong uh, believers in uh, one God and uh, three persons and so on. These are highly difficult concepts uh, to explain. Yet for a number of people it is true and uh, there is no reason to doubt that uh, they are believers. 
as a, uh, a teacher of philosophy, I uh, suspend the judgment uh, when I uh, find, I face uh, the truth uh, which is like uh, an illusion. Profound respect, but uh, at the same time a critical attitude, and uh, that is, doesn't contradict the fact that every day I am going to submit two hours to the recitation of the breviary, that is, the apprehension of a text about an illusion. No, it's a, but, 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 but this is a good habit. Of course, some people, you know, drink scotch, uh, other read the, read the brevarium, uh, or brevarium, or whatever. I mean, we need some routines that hunker us. Uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, according to the cultures, a, a walk in the afternoon. Yes, indeed, uh, for example. <laughs> going to the but, forest. But uh, there is something else uh, transcending uh, these uh, two types of truth. Uh, I do believe that uh, there is a dimension of the truth uh, that cannot be disputed. The truth is, is too strong, uh, Why don't you just uh, stay with the belief? Because truth, particularly if you refer to, to Foucault, for whom there is no truth, there is discourses uh, yes. of truth. No, 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 no. There Foucault, are discourses of truth. Foucault accepts. Well, this is the trivial one. Foucault, I mean, the, yes, yeah, accepts the, the trivial, trivial one. <laughs> but that, he accepts but that, also <laughs> the truth as an illusion. <laughs> and then there is a, a one that all of us, uh, we are going to accept a proposition can be true or false. Mm. It is a pure, it is purely logical. And uh, that philosophy. Not for the Chinese. Not for the Chinese. In the Can Western, be both. <laughs> well, we are in the Aristotelian uh, tradition, and uh, a proposition can be true or so false. We cannot uh, escape Eurocentrism, finally. We may come back to that. <laughs> we may come back to uh, Eurocentrism. But, but you this, know, I, I think that I want to take uh, this uh, because spirituality, for instance, uh, uh, one of the examples that people uh, sometimes give to me, for me, spirituality is the belief. It's not a, I don't have to, to work with the concept of truth. One of my favorite authors is Schopenhauer, and he has a very, in Pererga and Paralipomna, he has a very interesting text on apparitions, on ghosts, on dreams, what kind of truth is in there. And Ortega y Gasset, a great uh, yes. Spanish philosopher, yeah. distinguished between the science and the belief. Absolutely. So let's have the belief. So, the, for instance, the indigenous people, or, or in Africa, the ancestors, the idea that there is something beyond the material, the transcendence, the immaterial, the, 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 the fact that, for instance, you are in a community and the people, the, the, the chiefs, tell us, well, in this circle, our ancestors are with us. And then come the people from the government and tell them, you are crazy. Your ancestors are dead, so they cannot be here. And the shifts, the titans, as they are called in some communities in the end, and say, no, they are here with us. So there is this transcendence, this spiritual transcendence, which I think you find it also in Africa. This is not a question of truth. It's a question uh, of, of belief, it's a, of, of transcending the material, the material life. And all cultures, I think, have that element. And spirituality can unite us. Religion divides us sometimes, I think. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, you are uh, indeed uh, making me uh, think of uh, Paul Ricoeur and uh, the idea of two legs, uh, mm -hmm. a philosophical one and uh, a theological one. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the theological one is concerned with uh, the truth. <laughs> I have got just uh, two legs, and uh, the two legs uh, are uh, uh, of uh, a human being who believes that uh, the task, the important task uh, these days is a methodological agnosticism uh, in a culture in uh, which Christianity is uh, promoting oh, things like uh, uh, exorcism and uh, then uh, kids uh, are uh, in uh, impossible uh, situations and uh, uh, women uh, uh, have got uh, problems about uh, sorcery and uh, all these uh, 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 irrational, uh, in fact, uh, strictly speaking, things. Uh, and uh, the only way of uh, facing a situation like that is against uh, the traditions uh, to be critical enough uh, so that we can access ways of dialogue at least through 
three ways to transcendence, to exist in this world and to think the limitations in this world, and to speak about that ways of existing as individual, as a member of a community, or as this or that person, and to believe that through the process of conversion, a conversion in a purely logical manner that is the subject who can become a predicate and the predicate becoming the subject. In a, a radical agnosticism prevents the possibility of conversion because you cannot uh, not convert logic, anyone. Not, logical, uh, not logically. What, what does that mean, logical? Uh, the task of a teacher is not to convert anyone. My uh, task is uh, to introduce uh, uh, students, uh, uh, whatever their gender, their uh, 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 race, their age, uh, to introduce them to a, a way of uh, thinking clearly and uh, in a solid uh, manner so that uh, they are open-minded and they can speak now about the experience of being this particular woman, that particular mm -hmm. African, or uh, this particular agnostic or a believer. Some people sometimes criticize you, or at least comment, that you are much more comfortable uh, with the postmodern Eurocentric type of uh, authors than uh, with the postcolonial studies, and uh, you were very critical of negritude and uh, of pan Africanism. And I would even say that the same with Fanon. Let, let's take one by one. I mean, negritude. What was wrong with negritude as a project for Africa? First of all, uh, are you sure that uh, wrong is the correct uh, adjective? I would say there is something which is uh, problematic not with negritude, um, but uh, with uh, the thematization of uh, negritude mm -hmm. and uh, its understanding. Because the first uh, uh, young people uh, writing things about uh, the experience of being uh, different uh, as black, uh, it is uh, when? Uh, late uh, uh, 1920s, and uh, you find a woman organizing those parties. And then, uh, by uh, the early, mid-30s, uh, they are publishing poetry. Mm -hmm. Good. Poetry. Et, and uh, after the war, uh, Senghor uh, conceived this anthology and uh, invited Sartre, Jean-Paul Sartre, mm -hmm. uh, to write the preface and uh, that Black Orpheus. Black Orpheus has uh, a number of distinctions. One who is uh, thematizing the experience, uh, the uniqueness of the experience of being uh, black uh, after the slave trade, uh, colonization, mm -hmm. and uh, the necessary revolt, a white philosopher. Mm -hmm. Number two, Sartre is going to use a dialectic in order to uh, show the foundation of uh, uh, negritude, and uh, which dialectic? the Hegelian dialectic. Mm -hmm. Number three, in processing, Sartre was not stupid, saw something else which is not visible to most people. That is, you have got a thesis which is the affirmation of a racist white supremacy. Mm -hmm. You have got a negation that is an antithesis uh, which is no. an anti-racist uh, position which is uh, thematized uh, by uh, black people. And now, what's next? And uh, that's the problem uh, with uh, Fanon. I am coming back to Fanon. Fanon, he, he stole something. Uh, he deprived us of something. Fanon didn't get it. Sartre saw exactly what was there, and uh, he didn't write it because he couldn't decently write it. But he wrote Let's a me go back. for him. Let me go back. You take the feminist cause. You have the affirmation of the male uh, patriarchy. You have the negation, the, the anti-position. And then you have what next? You take the experience of the Jew and uh, anti-Semitism, again a book by Sartre. Mm -hmm. 
On feminism, I was referring to Simone de Beauvoir, That's the a, second a, sex. A, what you have there uh, is uh, the anti-Semitism, and then uh, the anti-anti-Semitism uh, that starts with, and then after that, what? I'm going to tell you what the problem there with the Sartre question, because the Sartre understood this. The thesis of negritude is an antithesis. Yeah. That is, you have got racism of uh, the uh, white supremacy, and uh, you have got the anti-racist argument that mm. are present. I am sorry. Logic, anti-racism is racism. Okay, period. so you look for a synthesis. Basically, in very simple terms, you look for a synthesis. What is the synthesis? There is no synthesis because you are facing a huge contradiction. There is contradiction white supremacy and against you racism, it. you are opposing racism. That doesn't make sense in terms of ethics. Mm -hmm. If I am against mm -hmm. racism, I have no reason. Logically, are the two racisms on equal foot? It doesn't matter. The racism, one of the stronger it is a and person, one of the It is an attitude that can be seen in, in language, in desire, in, in difference, uh, whatever attitude. But can and you understand, in, in, uh, not as a philosopher, probably, but as a sociologist, I would understand negritude as a kind of an uh, 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 expected reaction of people that have been so demonized because of the color of their skin as it was constructed from the, 19th no, century. No, that's not the reason. That's not the reason. You Did they don't, have to react you don't, in a sense? You don't, yes, you don't oppose a negation With a, yeah. to another negation. No, that's dangerous. Negation and negation that yeah, gives that's, a positive. That's, that's but right. uh, you don't uh, uh, oppose uh, uh, something uh, uh, ugly and to something ugly uh, as uh, a way of uh, uh, accessing How do we formulate something above and beyond as a synthesis okay. between the two? Okay. Humanity, the, humankind, a very humanistic Christian conception of humankind. All of us are equal and then uh, because we are human, because we have the divine grace upon us. Okay, and the, there no what matter the, how, the, you are saying uh, uh, it goes in the sense of uh, a reaction uh, to Fanon. Uh, Fanon reacted. Fanon is uh, uh, a MD and uh, yeah. things like that. He's going to react uh, to Sartre. And uh, he reacts to Sartre. He goes on uh, promoting uh, violence as uh, a response uh, to colonialism. Mm -hmm. What now, is your take on that? Yes, that's my take. This promotion of the violence has been uh, called uh, therapeutic mm. and uh, has been called uh, holy. Again, I am sorry, there is no violence uh, which is therapeutic, it is sickness. There is no violence uh, which is holy because it's not theological. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. it is simply a lack of uh, spirit of consequence. Uh, Fanon was uh, a good, uh, I guess, uh, psychologist or psychiatrist. He should have stayed doing that type of business and not philosophy, and the philosophy inviting violence. But he did a very important job in the liberation movements, even though some of them were criticized in Algeria and so on. So you dismiss the Fanon's uh, role in the liberation of Africa altogether, in a sense? No, that's not the point. Uh, I am criticizing only uh, philosophical propositions. And now, uh, let's go back to uh, Fanon and let's go back to uh, Negritude. Uh, uh, the first week uh, of uh, June, something happened in Paris. Two young uh, scholars, agrégés of philosophy, from the École Normale Supérieure, with the backing of the Department of Philosophy of the École Normale Supérieure, I was there, organized a colloquium on negritude and philosophy. Mm -hmm. Now, this is serious business. Younger generation, well educated, and uh, inviting uh, all these uh, uh, scholars, I was there, uh, to uh, speak and uh, to converse with them about negritude and philosophy, how to think this alterity which is called 
negritude in the world today by taking into account the count, the legacy of the past, one thing. And a few days later, there was the Nuit Sartre, Sartre in the world, uh, Sartre, uh, Sartre uh, the philosopher, the activist, the literary, and so on. And uh, we had a panel on Sartre the African. Yes, by uh, doing that, my paper was uh, on Sartre the African. Uh, my paper was, uh, in fact, raising uh, something else who is and who is not African. And Sartre, by committing himself to negritude, by inscribing himself in that marginal movement, and by positing himself against the dominant system, is African the way I might, might not be a good African. He is certainly a good African. First of all, to finish, I think that in our conversation, one of the topics that we start with was uh, if there are any lessons for the world at large that come from different tradition and from different historical experiences. And one would say, would, would think that Africa as an historical experience, both before colonialism and after colonialism, and the colonial uh, experience, you say in one of your books that uh, both Western modernity and slave trade are part of the African heritage. Yes. Of course they are. But, and I agree with you, but what would be a contribution? Well, if there is a lesson, or, or the, the question doesn't make any sense, to ask for a lesson of this historical trajectory of Africa for the world today, what, what could Africa say to the world that is different from what Europe has been saying and from the world at large has been saying? Something that could be specifically African, since we have been using also the adjective African, is there any lesson, uh, is there any learning, specific learning that we can, uh, you know, entertain in our age uh, or not? Or just... Uh, yeah, there is uh, this uh, very sentimental uh, uh, concept which was launched by... It is not by Leakey, by a leaf just, book just before Leakey. Uh, in which you find we all come from Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very romantic, that right. was fine. But you, romanticism is not with you, never. You, 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 you are not a romantic in any way. <laughs> and I, I'm sure that you, you don't agree with the, the philosophy and the lying. Sheikh and Adyup's first book of 1955, it's, Nation and the Cuban. Yeah, it might be time uh, to have uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, people uh, uh, reward that time. Yeah, okay. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. We have finished our conversation. It was wonderful. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you.